Okay guys, so today I'm going to have my review on the SEMA 1911 AEP. The model number for it is the CM123, if you were wondering about that. And you can get this gun for $63.95 on airsoftstation.com. Okay, to start off here first, uh, just giving you a quick rundown of what you do get with, uh, when you buy this gun for $63.95. Of course, you're going to get the gun. It would be pointless if you didn't get it. You would get one metal magazine. These are a stick type. 30 round magazine. All the AEPs made by SEMA are going to use pretty much the same mag. Sometimes you'll see a different configuration and how it actually attaches into the gun, but pretty much it's going to be the same. You're going to get a 100 round speed loader. These things, they come, they work, they will break on you after a while because they are very cheap. But hey, if you do seriously start using something like an AEP, probably tell you get something like a KWA M4 mag style speed loader. Next, you'll also be getting this charger. Unfortunately, these are the only chargers that work with the included battery. They suck, but they do the job. It takes like almost three hours to charge the battery. Make sure you unplug it afterwards, or it will just keep charging the battery and, of course, ruin it. So, moving on from what you get with the gun, the gun itself is really nice. The slide itself is actually metal, which gives the gun a really good weight. The loader receiver is going to be some type of cheap plastic, but you know, it is what it is and then moving on to the actual hand grips these are uh, plastic too and as you see they collect dirt really well I filled this game a lot when I went out to my local field yesterday uh, so this gun saw about 300 rounds of use which is a lot for a pistol but um with that said the gun held up good nothing broke on me even though this dropped off of my rig multiple times because this gun does not fit in any standard 1911 holster or anything Okay, so going off what I just said about the size of this gun, if you know anything about the 1911s, they're fairly slim, even for being a gun that was made for a 45 caliber round. So looking at this gun, it is freakishly huge. If I had to put a percentage on it, the slide itself is probably 30 to 40% larger than your standard 1911, if not bigger. So this is not going to fit in any 1911 circle holster, um, and you're lucky to get it to fit in your standard hip holsters. Uh, it could fit in my holster, but it, since it's so big, I couldn't get it to buckle. When I put it in an M4 mag pouch, I couldn't get the, the Velcro to go down all the way. So I ended up just having to wear this in between myself and my actual rig. So um, I found it falling out a lot, but with that said, nothing ever fell. Nothing broke off. So, uh, you know, the gun is pretty durable. That's good to see. Um, as far as the functioning parts on the gun or just moving parts and then moving on from their moving to functioning, we got the hammer. It says no function, but it moves, it's cool, it's metal, whatever. You got the the safety right here, the hand grip safety. This has no function at all. To be honest, this gun has no safety. The only safety is you not putting your finger on the trigger. Um, besides that, the only other moving parts is going to be your trigger and then your magazine release over here, which is very easy to hit, just like any other 1911. So be careful. I'd probably tell you not even have this magazine in the gun until you're ready to shoot it. So have it somewhere safe where you can pull the mag out because that's what happened to my first SEMA style AEP. Actual disassembly of the gun, the only thing you have to do is push up the slide lock or push down the slide lock on this gun. And then you just push the slide forward. It goes about forward about four to five millimeters. And then you lift up and then off the front. From there, as you see, the whole slide is hollow. It's metal, I'd probably say it's still some type of pot metal because it doesn't look of great quality. You got two screws down there. Those two screws hold on your rear sight. Rear sight and front sight have no dots on them. They're really not there to aim, just to orientate the gun in the right direction. It is airsoft people, not real guns. You lift up this one tab here on the left side of the gun that says QC on it, that stands for quality control. You lift that up and that'll let your battery come out. This is a 72 450 milliamp battery. So decent size for the amount of power you're only going to be shooting out. Gets you roughly about, I want to say, 12 mags at most out of the gun. So right under 400 rounds, but if you got to shoot any more than that with your sidearm, you're probably using it as a primary, and you probably need to buy some more batteries anyways. Uh, moving on from that, the only other functioning pieces in the actual gun is going to be the hop-up. Hopple works really good on this gun, but the fact that the gun does shoot such a low FPS, um, 
The slightest tweak will make the BB go from straight to hopping up. Uh, don't expect to be shooting anything past 80 feet with this gun effectively though. Just giving you the heads up there. And then everything else back here in the actual uh, hand grip of the gun where you'd actually be holding it. You can have your motor and your gearbox. Definitely not taking that apart. Why take anything apart that ain't broke? Um, but for the most part though, it is a metal gearbox. Uh, cool things to keep in mind. Hop-up chamber is metal. Really doesn't matter with such a low FPS, but you do get a brass barrel. And as y'all saw in the shooting test, if you didn't see it already, I'll link it into the description below. This gun is pretty accurate. Okay guys, so to conclude my review of the 1911, when it comes down to it, this gun does what it needs to do. Just like how I'm making this review right now, it's short and to the point, that's what this SEMA CM123 1911 does for you. Yeah, it only shoots 200 FPS. Yeah, the gun is a ridiculous shape, it doesn't fit in most holsters. And yeah, you only get one magazine option and there's really no mags available on the market. So with all that said, why would you buy this gun? You're that player that has a primary, you play mostly at a field. You get in a situation where you gotta run into a building and you just went from shooting people at 150 feet away to now five feet away. Pulling this gun out, it is a safer option. It is a lot cooler option in my mind. And overall, it just adds another aspect to your play style. So if you're somebody that just wants to have a secondary without breaking the bank, without you know sitting here thinking do I need extra mags will my gun work in the cold this is your option right here it's available in this the 226 version and I also believe the Glock version unless that one's out of stock so if you guys are interested in this I will have links below to airsoftstation.com and until next time this has been a what you're looking at production make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already make sure to like this video if you do have this gun or you do plan to get in in the future I'm out